Dear friend, how was your week? I hope it was okay. Welcome to today's video. It's the second episode in my journal and plan with me series. If you haven't watched the first one and you'd like to, it's where I set up the week you'll see me wrap up today while I tell you about my intentions for the rest of the year. I also mention a few other topics, but that's just the main topic that I wanted to tackle in that video. And if you have watched it, first of all, thank you so much for the love you've shown for that video. I was a bit afraid of introducing a planning series in this channel, because both writing and planning are very niche topics on YouTube, and I just didn't know if people would stay. Personally, I am interested in planner tube, author tube, book tube, and even art tube, and I have things to say about all of these. So, yeah, that's why I wanted to start making videos about my planning system and just to use this side of my life to check in with you guys every week. So, in the future, I want to make more planner tube and book tube videos alongside author tube ones and i'm really glad you friends are here for it too it really means a lot i think none of us are only one thing or are interested in only one thing and i think it's good that each of us is sharing the different sides of their personal interests and of their lives no writer is only interested in writing and there are so many things in life that help us write and for me this is one of them. But yeah, if you watched the first video in this series then you'll know that I consider this week to be the entrance into late 2023 and that I'm trying to implement a new way of living my days that allows me to be mindful and creative and just to spend more of my downtime in fiction. I don't know <laughs> I don't know how this sounds to anyone who isn't a writer or a reader, but for me it's just really important to spend some time outside of the real world. And that doesn't mean I'm unhappy with my life. I love my life and I really want to live it fully and to experience it deeply but I I also just really need my time in fiction yeah that's just me and I want to spend more of my days doing that so this week I took my first steps in that direction I picked up my notebook and started intuitive writing the novel that I've been working on since the beginning of this year, but kept delaying drafting for a multitude of reasons. Across 5 days and 5 short writing sessions, I got a total of 1990 words, which is honestly not a lot, not nearly as much as I want to be able to consistently write in the future but it was a gentle and steady start and honestly it just feels so good considering that I hadn't written anything substantial like words on the page since May which is when I tried to draft it and wasn't able to. I don't know if these are words that I'm going to keep in the story but at the moment I'm not worried about that because they're words that belong in the world I created and that immersion is all I'm looking for right now. So for this accomplishment I gave myself a little star. I've decided I'll reward myself with a star every week that I write at least 5 days a week because I honestly think that's an achievement and I want to keep it up. 
that novel, which by the way is a speculative mystery novel with the working title of Project Snow, is not the only one I worked on this week, because NaNoWriMo is coming up and I still hadn't decided on the project I was going to work on, but now I've decided and at first it was gonna be Project Chimney, but yesterday I changed my mind and <laughs> now it's gonna be Project Spooky. If you don't know what I'm talking about and you're interested, you can watch this video, I'll put it up in the cards somewhere or in the description. But yeah, that's all I have to say for now writing-wise because I've given you updates in other videos. So YouTube-wise, since this was the first week, I wanted to experiment with how much I could get done and so I set out to complete 6 videos four of which were already filmed and half edited. I did not do that. I completed three, not including the one I'm filming right now because I'll have to edit it next week. So, excepting today's video, one of the videos I did not complete was because I literally did not have time, because I underestimated how long editing would take me. I seem to always do this, I still haven't been able to accurately predict how long a video will take me to edit, but I feel like I'm in the right direction in that sense because I've been noting down exactly how many days I spend scripting, filming and editing each video. So I think in a few weeks or months I'm gonna have a pretty accurate average. But yes, so far I haven't been able to predict how long it takes me and I've been underestimating how long it takes me. But the other video was actually related to the artist's way, which I mentioned in my first journal with me video. So I intended on starting the artist's way on Monday but the book didn't arrive until Wednesday, so I had to delay filming that too. However, even if the book had arrived on time, I don't think I would have managed to edit that video either. Just because editing always takes me so much longer than I anticipate it will, and I honestly need to start being realistic about it. So next week I'm going to lower my expectations and aim to complete three videos and just see if I can keep up with that. It might still be overestimating how much I can get done, but I guess it's gonna be a second week of experimenting and I'm slowly going to get to the right number. Even if the right number is like one video per week. <laughs> At the moment, I'm not ready to accept that, but we'll get there eventually, if needed be. All in all though, I'm very satisfied with this new beginning, but there were still at least two habits that I wanted to develop and that just did not happen. So the first habit is to study Chinese. I just didn't have time again. And I honestly don't know how I'm gonna make time for it because, again, editing videos, it's just, yeah. I, and at no point, you, you know why. Basically what's happening is that I'm prioritizing YouTube over studying. And this would be okay and I mean I'm not too upset about it because right now I really do want to focus on my channel. But also I'm going back to China soon and I want to improve my Chinese until then. So it's kind of important that I make time to study. I'm still gonna try and get into this habit next week, but what I'm thinking of doing in the meantime, like if that doesn't work, is just to practice speaking Chinese daily instead of spending time studying, just, you know, speaking Chinese with my husband instead of English or Portuguese. And the other habit that got stomped on was exercising in any shape or form. 
I didn't even go for a walk until yesterday, which is honestly tragic. And yeah, there is no excuse for that amount of sedentarism. Definitely gonna try to check those boxes next week. But that's it for the productivity updates. Going into next week, I like to take into consideration what happened and how I felt the week prior. So while I set up the new week and tell you about my plans for it, I also want to look back to what I was up to before. So, something unexpected happened last week. <laughs> I don't know how, but I fell down a snoopy black hole. Actually, I do know how. I was looking for something cozy and Halloween-y to watch at the end of the day and in a list of recommendations I found It's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. I watched it and I don't know, something just clicked in my brain and suddenly I was obsessed. I loved it so much that when it ended, I needed more. So I started watching the Snoopy show, I'm still watching it and enjoying taking it slow, but what I did not take slow or chill was the search for some sort of representation of Snoopy in my life. My favorite Snoopy at the moment, and probably forever, is Halloween Snoopy. It's just such a visually pleasing combination to me. I really don't know how to explain it. It tingles in my brain. And so I found these mugs that I became absolutely obsessed with for a few hours, but I couldn't find them anywhere in Europe and I'm very afraid of buying things from the US because of a previous disaster experience I had with customs once the products arrived in Portugal. So I went on Taobao to try and find them, thinking I might be able to get them when I'm in China. But no luck in that regard. What that search did do was it opened a Pandora box. Really, I'm ashamed to admit how much time I spent just pinning items to choose from later on. I don't know if this weird fixation is gonna go away before then, but I'm actually glad I wasn't able to buy anything on the spot because I'm not usually an impulse buyer and I don't want to become one anytime soon. Ever. Anyhow, I did find a Snoopy plushie from Zara Home that I'm considering getting, but honestly probably won't because it's the price of a book and between anything and a new book, you know who's the winner. It's really tempting though. I just feel like it brings me so much happiness every time I need a pet hug because Bonbon runs away from hugs almost every time and my heart needs some solace from that. It needs solace from so much rejection. And I can already imagine hugging Snoopy. In the episode Beagle Days Ahead from the Snoopy show, Snoopy's hugs are just like therapy. It sounds so good. Just like what I need, honestly. So now you know why I'm decorating next week the way I am. Actually, going back to that black hole analogy, I thought about it before and I think it really fits the situation because when you get too close to a black hole, you start slowly spiraling around its center. Not just around the center, but toward its center. And the closer you get, the faster you spiral. And at some point, you get so close that the black hole sucks you in and you disappear. I think this fixation with Snoopy came at a time when I needed to disappear. I say this because I was getting anxious about a situation at work and at the same time I was starting to realize I wouldn't be able to complete as many videos as I'd set out to and I'd have to fail publicly. Well, here I am. I failed publicly. It's not nearly as bad as I thought you would be. I learned from it. I moved on. But yes, I needed to disappear and this is an urge I've had many times in the past 
but every time I tried to push it away and felt guilty if I gave in. This time though, I embraced it. I wrote out that energy until the end and I feel like I realized something about myself. Most importantly, my artist self. <laughs> you can tell I've been reading the introduction to the artist's way. But in all seriousness now, it was such a relief to just embrace an impulse like that. I even created a spread about it on the notes pages of my Hobonichi, where I tried to figure out what about Snoopy and particularly Halloween Snoopy I found enticing. And it took me down memory lane, because I had to look into my past to try and come up with an answer. And then, it probably had some effect on me that led me to choose Project Spooky for NaNoWriMo. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that before, but I think it's very likely. But speaking of memory lane, Actually, I've never celebrated Halloween before, partly because it's not a common tradition in Portugal. We celebrate the day after Halloween, which is All Hallows Day, in Portuguese, Dia de Todos Anjos, and the way we celebrate it is by going to the graveyard and cleaning our ancestors' graves. So, my first memory related to Halloween is actually a valenticular picture I got from... I don't know where, I don't remember. But it was an illustration of a haunted house and from one angle it just looked like a big house slash castle at night. But then from another angle you could see spiders and ghosts in the windows and I think also a witch in the sky and other Halloween-y stuff like that, I don't really remember. But I do remember that I loved that picture a lot. I remember the oranges and blacks that were very vibrant. And I remember loving that it was so mysterious to me. But I don't know where it is anymore, I haven't seen it in many many years. And I actually only remember playing with it one year. I don't know what happened to it after that. But that's my first memory of Halloween. And then I remember one Halloween, me and my sister decided to play hide and seek around the house once it got dark, with the lights turned off. Whoever was seeking was the witch, and I remember my sister saying scary things like... I am the witch, you know, in that scary tone. And I just got so scared that we had to turn on the lights and stop the game. Yeah, I was a scaredy cat. I still am, I've always been. I can't watch horror movies, but I do like spookiness and I like the vibes around the holiday. So yeah, I know I'm not the only one. Then I also remember another Halloween, and this is the last one I remember. I must have been around 10 or 11. We still didn't celebrate, but some kids from our town decided to go trick-or-treating. I've never seen Portuguese kids do that before. I think this was one of the clear signs of globalization, but they knocked on our door and my parents didn't open because they weren't interested in Halloween and the next morning we saw that the kids had thrown raw eggs at our door. It was such a bad feeling because like what did we do to deserve that and I don't know, to me it just gave me a bad impression of Halloween and of kids who celebrate Halloween because like being mean is not a really good way to celebrate anything, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> that's my last memory. And it's not a good one. But... Yeah, later on, the more I learned English and about English culture, the more curious I was about this holiday. And this year, I'm kind of celebrating a bit by getting Halloween candy 
and watching spooky movies and I also tried to write a Halloween story which you know how that went I'm celebrating on my own though which I'm fine with it's still not very common here in Portugal and yeah I'm just here for the vibes to be honest so yeah I'm happy with that but all of this to say that allowing myself to indulge in yet another curiosity has been good to me like it made me want to write stories i mean it made me want to create and yeah i like that although i'm not saying that this is a hundred percent good because it did give me shiny new idea syndrome to be honest, I actually like shiny new ideas. I think they should be listened to in the moment they come to you because that's likely to be the moment you'll be the most passionate about them. In my opinion. So the more you develop the story in the short amount of time that the quote-unquote syndrome lasts, the more authentic material you'll have to work on later on. If you pick the idea up again. I'm just throwing my opinion out there but this is actually a really complex topic that deserves its own video. I might talk about it in the future because yeah I just have a lot to say about it and about the concept of shiny new idea syndrome which I don't really like but yeah, you see what I mean when I say I have too many videos I want to work on. They're never ending. But back to planning next week. What am I hoping to accomplish? I think the most exciting thing is that I'm finally going to be starting the Artist's Way Challenge. I already know what I'm going to do for my Artist's Date, but no spoilers. You'll see when the video comes out. Something else really exciting is that I'm going to be prepping my NaNoWriMo project to draft in November. This year I'm actually a rebel and I'll be starting drafting on October 30th instead of November 1st. I realize I'm a rebel most years and I'm completely fine with that. I just like to ride the wave of writerly energy with everyone else. And speaking of writerly energy, I just love how every year NaNoWriMo reminds me of what it was like to write when I was younger. Last year I didn't have much time to outline and this year I definitely don't have time. So I'll be writing by the seat of my pants, which is what I used to do before when I first started writing. Nowadays I consider myself to be a plotter but I think that's partly because of the genres I've been leaning towards. I still enjoy being a pencer as long as I'm pencing the right project. So yeah, no outline and I'll be starting the zero draft on Monday the 30th. Which should be the day I'm posting this video if everything goes according to plan. Okay, one last thing I'm really excited about, but not sure if it's gonna happen or not. So this week I received an email from Stylo and Style saying that my Hobonichi 2024 order had shipped. According to their website, it should arrive in 5 to 10 business days, which could be either next week or the one after that. But I'm just really hoping it'll be sooner rather than later because I can't wait to have it in my hands. I'm still not sure if I'm gonna do an unboxing and first impressions video or just a journal setup video, but yeah, I'm just really excited to open up that box and see what I got. All right, let me drink a little bit of tea because my voice is getting dry. I've been drinking tea throughout this whole voiceover and I just had to cut that because I'm not good with voiceovers, I'm not good with <laughs> talking.
talking out loud i guess i'm i don't know how to pace my voice especially when i'm reading but also when i'm talking like <laughs> and especially when i get excited about things i just don't know how to pace myself but yeah we've talked about writing and we've talked about journaling but we have yet to talk about reading and that's a big part of my life and a big influence in the way I experience my week, to be honest, because of what I mentioned before in wanting to spend more time in fiction. So I'm currently reading The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. I shared a few of my reading options with you last week and ended up going with this one. Mostly because it's the only middle grade in my fall physical TBR and in the colder months I love reading middle grade and writing middle grade. It's just the best time for me to read and write and even watch middle grade. I just like everything cozy, everything that speaks to my inner child. So I'll talk a little bit about the book so far. It's a very different experience from reading Coraline, I have to say, which got me by surprise because they're both middle grade by the same author. I do know that Neil Gaiman writes very different things, but I don't know, I, was, I wasn't expecting it. And I'm not saying it's a bad surprise. The Graveyard Book, I think, would got me off guard was the fact that the graveyard book is an epistolary story. There is no sense of urgency and no goal the main character is trying to achieve. It's simply a collection of episodes in his life, which collectively represent his coming of age. That's the way I'm seeing it at least. I don't have the book with me here, so I'm not exactly sure on which page I'm at, but I'm still pretty early on in the book. I haven't read that much. I've been reading it slowly. But my favorite chapter so far is probably the one where the main character, Bob, has a friend from the living world. I don't remember her name either, but I really like how they are so different from each other because they grew up in completely different realities, but at the same time they are still so similar simply because they're both children and they're both human. So I really like that contrast. And I'm enjoying the story so far, but at the same time, I'm hoping it'll get better because the book was blurred by my favorite writer of all time, Diana Wynne-Jones. And she said this was Gaiman's best story at the time of its release. I'm not sure if the Graveyard book was released before Coraline, I should check that, but at the moment Coraline is still my favorite. And I think another thing that falls short to me, like because of my expectations. So I was actually hoping this story would be a bit spookier. I know I said I'm a scaredy cat and it's true that I can't take horror movies. In fact, when I first watched Coraline as a child, like, I had nightmares about it. It was bad. But that's a story for another time. Um, but I don't know. I like spookiness still. I like ghosts and vampires and witches. I don't like demons or zombies. None of that disgusting, gory stuff. I don't like any of that. But middle grade spooky books, movies and TV shows are perfect for me. I have a whole list that I could recommend to you and actually I probably should. I mentioned this in my last video, but I'm just always afraid that I'll be 
filming and editing that video and then it's already time for Christmas when it's ready so yeah but so far I'm not really getting the spooky vibes from this book even though it has ghosts they're not very ghostly like in a Christmas Carol for example which I love and I can't wait to reread this year the ghosts in the graveyard book are more like really old, old people. Yeah, not a criticism, but yeah, it was just not what I was expecting. I'm still hoping to be in love with this book by the time I get to the end though, and there's still a lot of the book to go through, so I'll let you know how I feel about it next week. And speaking of next week, I think we're ready. I don't really have much more to say. I hope you enjoyed this video. I want to start a tradition of ending each entry with an affirmation so I can always send you and myself off on a good note. So close your eyes and listen. It gets better. It gets better. It gets better.